Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And today we're going to be learning about how to pass arrays as parameters, and we're going to learn about multidimensional arrays. Now, uh, realistically, when you go into the professional programming, you're going to be almost putting all your snippets of code into separate functions. So it's really easy to maintain, and functions should never do more than one thing either, really. Uh, but not in this case, because that, does, that would just be too many functions to make. Uh, and too confusing right now, but anyways, let's uh, do what we did in the last tutorial. Let's take whatever information we put in here, and inside of a function, we'll store it into an array and print it in a list box. Technically, printing it in a list box should be a separate. You know what? Let's do two functions. Let's do that. Let's keep doing it. Okay, so let's go into our add, and I'm gonna click the access to because I have to have the snippets of both codes. Okay, so now we're in our add click event, and now if you declared your array up here like I did in the last tut tutorial, then you wouldn't have to pass it as an array because it can be seen everywhere. So, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you cannot do that. So let's say we created our scores, uh, whoops, not right there, our scores array here. And we needed to pass it in as a parameter. So, um, first of all, let's create our little function here first. So, let's type up private first, because we always do. Now, is this, this array that's going to be filling out this information, is it going to be returning a value? Nah. So, we can just put void. And let's call it fill array. And there we go. So, we're going to be passing in two pieces of information. Or, oh, I give it away. Let's still think about it. Let's think about what we have to pass in. Okay, so we have an element size of 5. So we're going to need a number that keeps incrementing up by 1 all the time. Uh, just like we did before, we have to create a static value or variable in order to do that. So static int i is equal to 0. And there we go. That's what's going to be going up each one. So do we need to pass this in as a parameter since we'll be using it by referring the index? No, because it's up here, and it can be seen everywhere, so we don't have to worry about that. But we're going to have to take in the information from this text box. That'll have to be passed in as a parameter. So let's actually get that information in first. So we'll type in int new score is equal to convert dot to int and text input dot text. I won't forget the text that time. And both of these will have to be passed in as a parameter into our fill array function up here. So first, in order to pass an array in as a parameter, all you have to do is type out the, uh, what do you call that, data type, followed by your brackets. You don't need to put a number in there. Followed by whatever name you want to give it. Um, what should I call it? Let's call it, well, let's, keep it call, let's just keep calling it scores. I don't know. I actually really don't know what you can uh, what else you can call it. And you know what? Let me cut this for just a moment to show you that this is a necessity at this point. So I'm going to cut with Control X, and let's try actually just um, filling in an element right now. So 32. See that underline it says the name scores does not exist in the current context, and that's true because we declared scores down here, and it's in a private button click event. But if I paste it back in there. Now the error goes away because it's right here. So that's cool. Now we're going to be doing that. So first let's create our if statement as we did in the last video. And if you didn't watch the last video, don't worry, this will make sense. So since our static i will be going up each time and it will represent the index number of what we'll be filling in, it cannot exceed uh, the highest element number, which is Four. Remember, the highest index number is always one less than what you put here. This is the number of elements, which is always one higher. So while i is less than 5, because you don't want to include 5, or less than equal to 4, that works too. Um, execute whatever we put in here. Else, let's do a message box. Dot show. And we'll have um, all students have been entered. Did I spell that right? No, I didn't. I've been entered. Okay, there we go. So we'll get that to make sure nothing bad happens. Okay, so now let's actually execute our code, or figure out what we're going to be writing in there. So 
our increment will go last. We want that to go last. And now let's actually assign something to our array. Now, oh, I actually forgot to throw our new score in as a parameter. So let's go int new score. You can still call it whatever you'd like. It doesn't have to be the same. I actually recommend it not to be the same because then it can become confusing. So let's go scores at i is equal to new score. There we go. And now we'll have to actually add that to a our list box now, right? And it's called list students or something like that. So what I said before, every snippet of code should be in its own function. So let's actually do that. So that won't be returning anything, so we can just call it private void um, list, I guess we could call it. And what will we have to pass in there? All we have to put in there is our array, that's all. So int uh, scores. That's all I have to put in there. So access the list collect students dot items dot add and we we'll have to add in, throw in there, scores at i. And do we have to do a two string there? No, we don't have to do a two string. In fact, let's do this. Let's go students and throw in a plus, throw in i plus, plus, there we go. And let's actually go i plus one since it starts at zero there we go now does that work yeah there we go that works no I don't oh yeah that's uh, that's the list. So, okay so we'll be adding in student whatever number they are a colon then their score so that's when that's what's gonna get added in there that's all this listing does so now we have to actually call that function from this function so we don't need to call that function out here in our button add click we can just call that function from our fill array function so right under the so as soon as we set that new score, let's pass in let's or let's call our list function. So list and throw in scores. And that's so that's how you pass it in as a parameter. So notice how when I passed in this array as a parameter, I didn't have I didn't put the brackets there. So likewise, when I go down here to our add click event, when I want to call our fill array notice that I'm only going to pass in our scores without brackets and we're gonna have to throw in new score so all that should work I'm gonna click save and hopefully all of this will work so like put in 320 and click add student 1 320 600 add student to 600 and there you go so that's pretty pretty easy and that's about it so next are multi-dimensional arrays now what what are multi-dimensional arrays and what's the point in them well let me show you a little uh, thing I made in paint so basically multi-dimensional arrays what they allow you to do is kind of give attributes for each of the elements you put in there so take away these six right here just look at the top three notice I have the planets I could just make a simple array that lists the planets, Venus, Earth, Mars, so on. Uh, but what if I wanted to also put additional in information associating itself with that one uh, element number? What I can do is make a multi-dimensional array. So this is only two elements. So imagine both an X and a Y axis for a multi-dimensional array. And you can also have three dimensionals, which would be visualized as X, Y, and Z. Uh, then four dimensions, I couldn't even comprehend that, and so on. But two-dimensional arrays is usually the most that you'll need. So, whoops. So, uh, so yeah. So imagine Venus as element 0, 0, Earth as element 1, 0, and Mars is 2, 0. Notice how hot and uninhabitable, which is associated with Venus, all have the x value of 0, all the Earths have the one at the beginning, and all the Marses have two at the beginning. So, so yeah. So this is the temperature, I guess, and whether it's habitable or not. A pretty bad example, but I mean, well, no, it's a good example, but it could be better. So let's declare it up here. So in order to declare a multi-dimensional array, type out the 
data type, followed by your brackets, and for each additional uh, dimension you want, throw in a comma. So one comma will be two dimensions, two commas will be three, and so on. But we're just going to be doing two. And we're going to call it planets, and we're going to set that equal to, and since we already know the values we're going to be giving it, let's put in, throw in a colon. I mean semicolon there at the end, so with our curly braces. So, um, since this is a, since we have three different, um, so if we had a normal single dimensional array, we have three different elements we'd be dealing with. So in a multi-dimensional array, we would have to put three sub little curly braces inside. So however, however, so if this was our single dimensional array, uh, how many elements we have in there, put that many curly braces in there. Then in here, put all the first column information in there. So Venus hot and uninhabitable. So we'll go Venus hot uninhabitable. This will be Earth. Whoops. Oh, whoops. I didn't put them as strings. My bad. String. 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 Whoa, way over there. String. And let me just throw in the strings here. And the strings here. Whoops. And remember, each one of these have to have the same size. So notice how each one of these uh, areas ha each have three pieces of information in here. So we have Earth, we have Normal, and we have Habitable. And for our last one, we have Mars, which is super cold, even though the thin atmosphere leaves you prone to a bunch of sunburns. And Unhabitable. There we go. So all the Venuses are here, so these are all your, this is your first column, all the z X's are zeros there. So basically this is your um, X value. So this is X, Y equals zero, Y equals one, Y equals two. The, these all have X equals one, and these all have X equals two. That's the way you can look at it. So let's actually try to access one of these. So let's go down our access button, and I don't have a label, so let's just make a message box dot show. And let's just throw in planets in our brackets. So remember, if this is a number, don't forget to put the two string at the end. But these aren't numbers, these are already strings, so we don't have to worry. So zero, zero should return us Venus. Whoops! Oh shoot, I wasn't doing the right thing. I clicked the wrong button, sorry about that. Access. There you go, there's Venus. And if we try to access, let's say, zero, 01, that should give us the temperature, which is hot there, right? Hot. So that's really, really, really cool, right? And that's really about it for multidimensional arrays. Um, I already showed you how to fill an array. You can pretty much fill an array the same way. If you were using I's and J's like I was, I mean, if you were using a, like a nested loop or a nested if statement, or if you were using two text boxes, one could represent I and the other one could represent J. That's how you could fill a, a multidimensional array. I, J, and K would be a three-dimensional array. Kind of like vectors, if you think about physics, you know, I hat, J hat, K hat. If you're into physics and math, you'd know about that kind of stuff. But yeah, so let's, let's look at Earth. It's the first one of the number one. F5, and click access, and there's our Earth. Okay, um, I'm actually going to show you the other way of like if you were to fill out but with these informations really quickly so it's uh, an easier way to see uh, how this would be done. So I'm going to stop here and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I would like to show you the way to declare the multidimensional array and initialize it if you don't know the values you'll be giving it right off the bat. Okay, so as you can see here, um, how did I know to put 3-3 three, three in here is right here. How many rows are there? Three. So don't look at the highest um, subscript. Basically, you can look at the highest subscript, then add one to each of them. That's the way you could do it. So three, three is one more than those. So and this is uh, down here. Um, I created the list for the access button, and as you can see, all the zeros here are related to Venus. All the ones here are related to Earth. All the twos are related to Mars. And if I run this, and I still use the one zero for the planets, I still get Earth. Okay, and uh, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.